Hello everybody and welcome back to the Nerdly Out Loud podcast, the official podcast of nerdly.co.uk. Your favourite home for all your news, reviews and exclusive interviews, mostly by me because I'm awesome, as I keep saying in every, every episode. We cover everything from the big budget to the low budget to the no budget with a special keen interest on the smaller guys the more independent guys the lower end of the scale these are the guys we like to push and that's what these episodes are all about the indie talks are all about getting these people on to push their projects projects that you maybe wouldn't have heard about if you're just a casual netflix fan and that's where you get your movies or if you only go to the cinema to see the big blockbusters these movies are the movies that you absolutely should be seeing the movies that are absolutely doing everything right, telling good stories with great directors and great cast. And that is why Nerdly Out Loud, nerdly.co.uk, the podcast and the website like to push them to the moon. Speaking of pushing independent directors to the moon, a movie that is just released, I believe, over in America and Asia and is coming to the UK very, very soon. Mr. Tom Payton's movie, 400 Bullets, a movie that I absolutely adore and I can't wait for everybody to actually see it when it's released. This is a film that Tom always takes it to another level. Every movie he makes is a step up, 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 up. With this one, he's kind of dialed it back a bit, but his creative artistic vision is so unsure in this movie. It's not what we're here to talk about, though. We are here to talk about the intergalactic adventures of Max Cloud. A Scott Adkins movie that I absolutely adored at the tail end of last year. Last year, I just needed to be entertained. I didn't need... I didn't need big blockbusters like Tenet coming out and trying to confuse me with all its wizardry and all that malarkey. I needed something to take me from the the pandemic news and the lockdown news that was everywhere. So I needed movies that entertained me and took me somewhere. And the intergalactic adventures of Max, that is a mouthful to say. We'll just call it Max Cloud. I'm pretty sure it's just called Max Cloud anyway. So yeah, Max Cloud comes out. Scott Adkins is in there. If you've listened to this podcast before, if you've listened to the show before, if you've watched the show before, you will know I'm a fan of Scott Adkins. My my ultimate goal right now is to have that very man sat talking to me. So for this episode, I managed to get writer and lead actress uh, Sally Collette to come on the show, and she was absolutely amazing. I also managed to get uh, wingman sidekick Elliot Langridge, who plays Jake in the movie. He is sort of the second lead of the movie. I managed to get these two guys on the podcast to talk to me about the movie. Sally was just awesome. She wrote this thing. If you watched my top 10 of 2020, you will know that I've talked a little bit about Max Cloud in there as well, because it made my top 10 of last year. There's no other way, no other movie could have uh, taken its spot. It just absolutely blew me away. I loved it. I loved it. So Sally and Elliot came on the podcast to talk to me about the making of the movie, um, what they've got coming up after this, and when when the the pandemic goes away and whatnot. Not that it's ever going to go away, but when it sort of eases. Um, they got a lot of stuff going on, which is really cool. One of the things I really liked was that we got to talk a little bit about their sort of their circle within the industry with director Martin Owen and, and other people who came on board. Because, by the way, this film doesn't just have Scott Adkins, Elliot Langridge and Sally Collette. It also has Tommy Bloody Flanagan. Yes, if you're a Sons of Anarchy fan, which I was a massive Sons of Anarchy fan, of course, when... When spoilers, when Obi died in series three, I, I took I took a few months off. I did take a few months off. That was, yeah. John Hanna is also in the movie, and and if you don't know who John Hanna is, you are clearly just not watching British TV at all. Touch of cloth, man. That dude was awesome in that show. So this is like it's a straight up sci-fi with an eight-bit kind of retro gaming. Um, twist to it which is awesome it's always good to have 8-bit retro gaming twists with a lot of synth and retro 80s ball scores 
But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm speaking too much, I'm speaking too much. We'll get into the episode now in a minute. However, I just want to make sure that anybody new to the show or to the podcast, please do hit that subscribe and the like button and the notification bell and everything. It's all below. I'll do a nice little cheeky graphic right here for you. Do all that good stuff. And if, you, if you're not new, but you're returning to see this video after some of our other awesome content, thank you very much for returning. And if you haven't pressed those buttons, please do that as well. It, all helps it all helps to get us out on the algorithm and people find us easier and um, we are a small independent podcast channel a uh, youtube channel website whatever you want to call it but we are going to keep trying to grow i'm going to keep bringing you content but what we're going to do is we're going to go into the interview now with sally and with elliot and i'll come back on the other side of the interview because i've got something pretty cool that i'm trying you might not be interested in but you might. So yeah, come back for that. Can you hear me? Rest man, back. We're going in hard. This is Captain Max Cloud. Do you read? Over. Okay then. Who wants the first dance? Max Cloud is here. Uh, Dad? Playing those damn games. Oh, get it back when you learn how to lose. I wish I could just play video games all day, every day. Okay, Sarah. Keep it together. Is this real? Can I touch you? <gasps> Pull yourself together, soldier. We don't have time for this. What? Fear is not near. Cowboy is here. Cowboy? Holy smokes! I'm pretty sure I'm in the game. I'm kind of freaking out right now. Sarah, look out. I Literally no one was shouting. Soon, it will be our love. If your friend can complete the game, we might actually have a chance of getting out of here. The fate of the universe lies in the hands of Max Cloud. Did I say the universe again? You were fantastic. I remember when the, when the trailer first dropped, I'm, a, I'm also a big Scott Adkins fan anyway. You know, definitely easily one of the best Brits that we've got here doing the punchy kicky stuff. And uh, when the trailer dropped with Scott Adkins doing all this, and it's like this 8-bit video game, 80s retro. I was just sitting there like, oh, man, I can't wait for this movie. So, yeah, <laughs> ticked all my boxes. Definitely different for Scott. Definitely, definitely. I think that's what it was as well. Like, I now want to see Scott play Johnny Cage in Mortal Kombat <laughs> because of this movie. But, you know, it was one of those things, I think, Martin just saw something in him that was like, mm. I reckon this guy can be funny. Yeah. Um, and Scott was a little bit wary of it, I think, wasn't he? Um, he was scared I, that he I, wasn't I funny. Laughing. <laughs> he thought he wasn't funny. funny. And we were all creasing at him every day. Like, <laughs> Yeah, he was, there's so many funny bits that didn't make it in because it was almost, some of it's a bit too rude or like, mm. he was just going for it. <laughs> <laughs> the movie the intergalactic adventures of max cloud one of the best movie titles i have heard in a long long time it came out in 2022 if you watched my video at the start of the year which was a top 10 of 2020 uh, 2020 sorry not 2022 it was a top 10 of 2020 uh max cloud was in there i went on about it for a little while because it's a super high concept retro synthy 80s balls 8-bit video game Scott Adkins kicking the crap out of people movie that just ticked every single one of my boxes. So tonight I have the writer and one of the stars, Sally Collette. Is that right, Sally Collette? Uh, call it, call it, Collette. Collette. <laughs> hey, say it how you want. Everyone says it differently. 
a lead star in this as well, which is awesome. Uh, we, we also have Elliot here, who played Jake in the movie, one of the other stars, um, both of whom are just fantastic in this film. I raved about it for ages, but how are you guys tonight? How are you doing? Very well, thanks, Kevin. Good, all good. Apart from my cat, he keeps, <laughs> he keeps jumping up in front of the screen, so hopefully he's gone now. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, we've we've had plenty of people uh, interrupting these podcasts, so I wouldn't worry about that. So first of all, I am massively excited to chat to you guys. I think Sally, I've uh, I've been pretty much stalking you on Twitter to get this interview. <laughs> uh, I even titled my initial email to you, Twitter stalker guy. Please come on my podcast. <laughs> Yeah, I appreciated that. <laughs> I was like, used stalker, yay. <laughs> how about you let the guys know a little bit about yourselves and how you came to Max Cloud? Who wants to go first? You, you, you wrote it, so I feel like you should go first. Yeah, I suppose it, yeah, it stemmed from that. So basically, Max Cloud came about because. Um, it came about very quickly, actually, because a studio up north in York had a space station set that nice. they wanted to repurpose. And they said to Martin, the director, you don't happen to have a film that's set in space, do you? And because um, we want to shoot something next month. And he was like, oh, let me think about that. And then came to me and was like, these guys want a film in space. Do you reckon we could write something in the next two weeks? And I was like, okay, sure, why not? <laughs> so um, that's how it happened. And then um, Martin had the idea of this. It came, it started with the character of Max Cloud. And then we kind of built the world around that. For me, that was kind of, I got the call pre pretty much like, maybe, yeah, a couple we of weeks before we started shooting. <laughs> Yeah, because we actually wrote, we Elle, we knew you were going to be in it, didn't we? So we, I remember writing it and imagining Elliot doing the part of Jake and kind of thinking, oh, what funny shit can I get him to do? <laughs> so... Well, when you, you know, when you're writing a 16 year old girl stuck in a man's body in a computer game, who else would you think of? Other than me? <laughs> so... Get Elliot <laughs> to do it. I mean, I mean, no offense, but you do kind of have that look, so it. Was... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? They thought I didn't enough, so they gave me a big old perm as well. That was just, you know, just in case there was any confusion. <laughs> he loved um... the perm. <laughs> so, so yeah. on that, um, the, the movie coming around because there was a, a set available and they wanted to film something on it. With it being um, just the one of my favorite things about the movie is the physical set of the spaceship. So, how how was it to sort of to write your story around that, knowing that you had certain set to work with? So, I don't think we actually knew what exactly was there. So, we just. <laughs> We just wrote a film in space and then once we got there, it was a mad scramble to just make it work. <laughs> so, yeah, but it was just so lucky that, that we obviously knew that if they've got a spaceship there, there's going to be a main deck of the ship. There was yeah. a hallway. Um, and then I think we we made Max Cloud's bedroom was something else. And then obviously I don't even know what Revengers Lair would have been before, but that was more like a, one of their green screen rooms. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they just built they just built that yeah so we still we could have creative license so yeah. we, we weren't held back too much well because it wasn't the um, the original set was obviously for another film but it was like they repainted it and made it look completely different and I've seen clips of the other they've actually shot a few films there now haven't they it was like mm. three or four movies on the mm -hmm. same set and they all look completely different um, obviously ours is the best so <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't really hope uh, because obviously you've got your set um it's already there for you it's all physical and you're writing a space movie so where did the the colorful 80s vibrant sort of theme come from because you're saying you have to repaint and everything or where did that setting come from just you wanted it to be comic booky uh, video game yeah it basically all stemmed from the video game premise yeah. so it, the world came it was like video game come to life so that you, I guess as a you know as an art department you would have a great time playing with that and we just and Martin just wanted it to be colorful and you know because they the games were back then oh, it yeah. was just all a load of color and and so there was it was just that was basically all it was make it colorful make it fun 
<laughs> and uh, obviously the the part of Jake was written for Elliot, um, but you also have um, Scott Adkins in there as Max Cloud, who is phenomenal. How did you get him on board with this movie? Obviously, uh, you guys thought that um, he had the comedy chops and everything, but how, how did you go about writing the role and then get him onto it? You know what? I can't remember. I think, I think I knew when we were writing it, Martin and I had looked at clips of Scott and been like, this is the type of action hero that need, that it needs to be. Mm. And then we were like, actually, he would just be great. <laughs> um, so it, it was, and I think Scott even said it, like in my head when we were writing it, it was basically a Ron Burgundy inside a Buzz Lightyear costume. <laughs> and then it was so funny because Scott actually said in an interview that he kind of based the character on Ron Burgundy. So I was like, nice. we were so on the pe- same page. Um, but I think, I think Martin, maybe Martin just approached the, all the, oh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. But he, sure. We basically just put it out there and was like, why don't, let's just ask him. Yeah. And he read it and just was just fully on board straight away. It was great. And we've mentioned him a couple of times, uh, Martin Owen is the director of this movie and he, he's made a couple of uh, movies that I've seen recently that I really enjoyed. The uh, the I think it was Anonymous, Killers Anonymous or that, that, was a, that was a great flick. I really enjoyed that. And one thing that I really enjoy when I'm talking to the British creatives, especially more than, than across the pond or anything, is that everybody seems to know each other and everybody seems to have their own little pockets that they sort of work around. And doing a little bit of research, I saw that you guys have all worked together quite a few times now and coming up as well the 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 sky original show as well twist you guys were working on that movie isn't it i've watched some of it but um you make it all the way through what do you mean (laughs) can can i can i be honest with you you get to my bit and then you were like i'm done it's all good it's parkour it's just not for me (laughs) (laughs) so so anyway but how did you guys get involved with martin and how did this relationship come around and and you guys have all sort of formed what looks like a nice little uh, close-knit bond so elliot you met martin first so yeah um i met martin about six years ago now i think he was he was a young man at the time so it it was a while ago uh yeah i I auditioned for a film um, and I went in and, and instead of having to actually read lines and, and do anything like that, we just had a chat in a cafe and it was really nice. And I was very thankful because I'm awful with auditions. I'm dyslexic. So the lines get out of my head. I get really nervous. So to have that and just have a chat and talk about what the character could be like. And, mm. and it was my first American part as well. So he had a lot of faith in me to just sort of pull it off. Um, so yeah, we worked together on on that film, and then just kind of got on really well. And and um, I've worked on a couple of things since, and a documentary as well, a couple of little, like, kind of all kinds of things really. So um, yeah, it, it, it's kind of a different experience with mine. Once you you know we know the gang's back together, and we all turn up, and it's kind of like usually it's a lot of the same team, so it's it's a lot of fun. So I so it was Killers Anonymous your second. Did you do Stage to the Cage before Killers Anonymous, Al? Yeah, um, yeah, you, mu- you must think, have done. I think so, yeah, it was just before. So, yeah. Elliot was also in Killers Anonymous, <laughs> and then I came, I got a job on Killers Anonymous as Martin's assistant. So I was assisting for that film, and obviously became friends with Elle and all most of the team. And then, what was it? And then after Killers Anonymous finished, we you hadn't finished doing Stage to Cage, which is the documentary that Elliot and Martin worked together on. So I carried on after we'd finished filming Killers Anonymous, working on um, kind of finishing off the Stage to Cage documentary for Martin. So I was doing some like extra interviews and stuff. Um, and then that was when Max Cloud came about. And Martin knew that I was a writer as well. So he thought it was a great opportunity for to just have a go and write something. So that, that was kind of the sequence of events. And then since then, we've just been kept working together. How, how does it work when you've 
been writing something and you, you've written this movie that is as badass as Max Cloud is, by the way, and then you then take up a role in it as one of the leads. How different or how amazing is it or how different is it from just writing the thing or helping to direct the thing to taking a main lead part and running with it? Well, so this was like my first lead role in a film. So I was shitting myself. I didn't know what, <laughs> what the hell I was doing. But I was really lucky enough to be in the position where Elliot was there. Yeah. I knew Al. I trusted Al. I felt comfortable with him. Um, Tommy Flanagan was there. He oh, was man. Pillars Anonymous as well. So I knew Tommy and felt comfortable with him as well. And then Scott was just lovely. So for a group of people that I spent most of my time on camera with, I felt really safe with all of them. And it was just the perfect kind of way to step into a, a first time at something. So I feel grateful that I had those guys around me. Um, but it was it was weird because when you're writing something, you pitch, you have a picture in your head yeah. of how it's going to be. And then obviously Martin might have taken a scene in a completely different direction in his head. And I'm going, OK, I need to throw that away now, how I've imagined this and just go with what Mar with the direction Martin's taking on it and try not to let that stop me from just doing his vision. Yeah. So it's weird. You've got to like draw a line. <laughs> See, see, yeah, that's that's where I would fail because if I'd written it, I'd be like, no, no, this is how we're doing it. This is how we're doing it. I know you're yeah. the director, but this is how we're doing it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you just got bite your tongue. <laughs> and, and is that yeah, something? Yeah. Is that something yeah. you want to do a lot more of going forward? Like uh, more writing? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, like Elle and I just wrote something together last year. Nice. Um, just for well, it was a project that Elliot had been working on for a while and we and he asked me to collaborate with him on it so and that was just us two getting together and doing it it wasn't really for you know no no studio had been like oh can we have a movie it was just you know keeping staying creative keeping sane yeah. <laughs> especially last year especially last year yeah <laughs> Now, uh, now, Elliot, I have to ask this question because one of the things that I picked up on when I wrote my review was that some of the mannerisms that Max Cloud has throughout the movie, and, and I've watched the movie again, and it turns out you're both doing it quite a lot. You know, like when you're in sort of dialogue mode and everything, and you're sort of like bouncing, I don't know how to describe it, but you're kind of bouncing around a little bit, and then you've got your victory poses and everything like that, and yeah, taking this from video games specifically, because it is very much like, you know, when you've got the round one and they're ready to go before it says fight, they're kind of doing that. Is yeah. that something that you guys just brought to the table yourselves? Um, I'd like to say it was all my idea, but um, <laughs> it's actually a mixture of Martin and the stunt team. Um, when they were coming out with the fight sequences, Martin wanted to make sure that, you know, it was, you know, you wanted the fight scenes to be good and exciting, but at the same time, they still need to be based in that reality. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there was, yeah, there was loads of little decisions like that where, you know, there'd be little ticks or little movements where it just kind of made it more real, the whole world. And it, yeah. yeah, Martin was very on that kind of making sure that the theme was kind of solid throughout the film. Um, yeah, I can't take credit for that. <laughs> well, you made it work. You made it work because um, one of the... I'm on a WhatsApp group for a bunch of retro gamers and everything. And I literally sent them a little clip of, of you and Scott sort of doing a bit of dialogue, but you're sort of doing the movements. And one of the lads straight away was like, yeah, I'm watching that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's little things like that that make all the difference, really. Mm -hmm. Well, there's been things in like some of the reviews where I've gone, oh, yeah. <laughs> like little things that I didn't notice that people were doing or you know there's little things in the film that I've I kind of was like oh yeah there's a little kind of easter egg there mm. um for people that are into games and I used to love those sort of games as a kid as well but I missed a few <laughs> and then people were telling me where the easter eggs were and I was like oh yeah oh yeah 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 sure 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 I see, yeah. <laughs> um yeah we we mentioned it at the top of the top of the chat um how was it playing a teenage girl and where were you drawing from for this role? <laughs> Not something I thought I'd ever get asked. Um, yeah, I mean, I remember the conversation with Martin where he was, you know, him and Sally were kind of, 
they had this very short timeline to write this script and come up with the ideas and and Martin messaged me and he was like we're coming up with characters what kind of characters do you want to play <laughs> and I was like I don't know something really different that I've never done before that I'll probably never do again something really like just that will really push me and then Martin rang me back I done it pretty swiftly afterwards and in I could tell he was smiling even though I couldn't see him and he was like you've got the part <laughs> gonna be this and I was like oh my god <laughs> okay that was a little bit more extreme than I thought it was gonna be but you know it's, it's great to when how often do you get to play a role like that it's just it's so different and um yeah it was just <laughs> one of those roles you can't really not do it because it's it's just so it's such a good opportunity um, I can't remember what the question was now, but I can't no, no, that pretty much answers it. Oh, okay, <laughs> I love, I love being sixteen year old girl. That's we'll just, <laughs> I'll, I'll put that on the poster. <laughs> no, I just genuinely um, because your character is the not only are you sort of like the perfect uh, sidekick, I guess you would say, to Max Cloud, but your character is very much in a situation of knowing a little bit more than you should but also really not being able to do a damn thing about it you just kind of have to go with it <laughs> and that's i love the way you put that across and then sally's character comes in and sort of grounds the the, the trio kind of thing and makes it all work was the the choreography because we've mentioned scott adkins a little bit being in this this movie and doing most of the the heavy work when it comes to punchy kicky stuff but you guys were also throwing hands quite a lot, especially yourself, Elliot, with your your little throwdown with Mr. John Hanna, which was pretty damn cool. But how how did you guys get around the choreography and and sort of get into it? Oh, <laughs> um, it was quite kick bollock scrambles because we, I, like as Sally said, you know, even writing it and setting everything up and everything else was all kind of last minute. So you know, as you can imagine, we didn't have that much time because we mm. were suddenly on set. <laughs> like having known about this project maybe three weeks before we started shooting it so um yeah it was it was all kind of last minute but they had, they had a really good team on there um a lot I, I mean the guys I can't remember exactly the name of the the company Andy Andy Long was the, Andy Long that's it uh, the fight with... coordinator was that what you call it fight coordinator yeah, fight yeah. yeah. Andy yeah. Long and he he he's worked with like Jackie Chan and and a lot of the team that worked on this worked on um, Gangs of London and stuff. So they were all very, you know, they knew what they were doing. And um, it was really good fun, actually. And and because I'd just done the documentary with mine, which was basically me having a real fight after, you know, three weeks training in MMA. Um, coming onto this, I was like, oh, this is so nice. I don't actually have to fight anyone for real. I can just <laughs> have fun and not get beaten up. So, um, yeah, there wasn't much time, but it was kind of, you know just get stuck in and, and learn as much as you can and um we, we had about three maybe three days training with them before we days. started i think yeah. where they we were just on these maps do you remember that room in on these maps in a weird room and the the stunt guys just spent all day for three days trying to teach Elle and i these fight combinations but they were, they were amazing, like, because I'd never done anything like it before um, and actually managed to pick up quite a bit. But they're the ones that sell it. They're the ones mm. that make make you look like you know what you're doing. Yeah, for sure. And they're like, they're, their reaction to you hitting them is what sells it. And yeah. Yeah, that was great. It's still, it feels great. <laughs> it feels <laughs> great. Sometimes I did connect a little harder than I was supposed to, <laughs> but it looked great. <laughs> Just like throwing these grown men around. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's what, what they're paid for. It's what they're yeah. paid for. <laughs> they love it. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, and you guys were all really getting into it and, and doing all that. But your your cinematographer is absolutely fantastic. Um the the seat I think there's there's one it's like a one take fight in the hallway with Scott when which basically ends with one of my favourite scenes in the movie when he literally sticks a knife through someone's head into the ceiling and I was just like, Wow <laughs> We we just went there. Um so so who um I, I'm not sure if this is a question that you guys can really get into with me, but the, the cinematographer, who who was it that came on board for this? Oh my hell. Oh my hell. <laughs> He's got the name for it as well. He, he, guy. Um, he, he's definitely something else 
<laughs> also known as the Norwegian Hammer. Mm -hmm. um, he, he's he's worked with Martin a few times. Um, he also did Killers Anonymous. Excellent. Uh, and, and Twist. Yeah. And Let's Be Evil, actually. So all the films I've worked on with Martin, he's done. Um, yeah, he did the lighting on Let's Be Evil and then came on to the rest to actually be the... Um, the cinematographer so he's 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 part of that family <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome see this is the, genuinely one of my favorite things about speaking to guys like yourselves and speaking to people within the industry and the creatives is like, people do tend to stick together and and they uh, all work together and all that and do, are you finding that more and more uh, within the within the the british side of things no l you've probably worked more than me. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, um, yeah, I mean, uh, to be fair, a lot of my jobs recently have been through people I've worked with before or writers I know or producers. Of, you know, it's, I, I think it's a lot to do with connections because when you go into an audition, as Sally knows, it's like, it's like winning the lottery, trying to get a part. Um, so, you know, a lot of the, I mean, I did a, I did a war film which is coming out um, this year and that was only because um, a mate of mine was like oh I've gone for this part you're you're like perfect for this role and they even mentioned you as a as a reference for this role I was like why did I not get an audition for it <laughs> and then um, I rang up my agent and was like can you get me an audition for this thing that they've referenced me in, please and um, yeah they ended up getting me an audition I ended up getting the role and in fact there was several people on that reference list and they cast pretty much all of those people so it was <laughs> pure luck my mate being kind enough to be like you know I've gone for this part but I've fucked the audition no. you should go for it um and it, it is there's a lot of luck and a lot of kind of you know as you say like if you work with someone you get on and it's a good collaboration and, and you respect each other that is you know the best scenario really and hopefully you just kind of you work with those people again and you build trust every time you work with them so that's how what I found anyway I don't know what would you what, what have you found Sal? It's always nice to go back to work and see friendly faces mm. because it just it I don't know it just feels you feel comfortable don't you and you feel like you're all you're kind of all in it together. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah definitely. so on that when are you getting the band back together for a Max Cloud 2? <laughs> That's not for Sally. She's got to write it. <laughs> You've got plenty of time. <laughs> I know. I guess, but there's no, there's no one saying we're not going to write it. But I guess you know, it, we just need to wait. For somebody to go. We all right. We want that. Go on, do it. Uh, we want that. Go on, do it. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're very glad that you enjoyed the film. <laughs> just, yeah. We yeah. honestly like I'm, I'm not even like there's it's quite funny because when i do these things I, I speak to a lot of different people and a lot of the time it's like you you've just watched a movie that you enjoyed for sure you enjoyed it but every now and then there's one that comes along that i specifically just as sally knows hunt you down because i need to speak to you about this film <laughs> <laughs> And this this was one of those films, Max Cloud, absolutely entertained me. It was just, it was so cool. Uh, what, what I want to do is I, I want to ask you guys, because I feel like I've pitched your movie enough now. So I want you guys to to give our listeners or our viewers the, uh, the elevator pitch that you would give someone to watch Max Cloud, why they should do it. What? Oh, no! no. <laughs> This is definitely Sal's job. She wrote this film. Oh, yeah. He's, it, this this job always goes to the writer, Elliot. I can't... No. It's just like... Okay, how... I was trying to describe it to... Elliot, you can see me just like... I'm sweating. <laughs> this is literally my favourite part of these interviews. I was trying to describe it to my grandma because she tried to watch it and... She's did the key not we're going for. <laughs> she did not understand it at all, obviously. Hmm. The, and the, what I said, I kind of said, it's a really fun action comedy um, with loads of 80s nostalgia that does not take itself too seriously. If you're looking for a film that, you know, you could, that takes itself seriously, this isn't the one. Um, so if you're up for a laugh and a bit of stupid fun, Matt's Cloud is is for you. 
Uh, now, Elliot, please. It was so I good. I, I don't think I need to add to that. I think that was, that was great. Oh, sort so, of crawl out my skin. What, what, I was, uh, what I was wondering, because things in this country are a little bit pants just now, um, but it looks like we may be on a trajectory of getting out of it. So I was wondering, what do you guys have on the other side of this that you're working on? Is there anything you can talk about that you, you project you've got coming up or things you're looking to in the future? Well, as, so obviously, Elle and I have got our project that we worked on last yeah. year. Which, which you I'm won't tell me about. anything about, but okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what, <laughs> what the is that, I, can pitch it. I can pitch that one. <laughs> can you, well, Elliot, why don't you pitch that movie? Okay, so elevator pitch. Um, it, it, See, you're sweating now. <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> um, it's basically if you're again, if you're a fan of the 1980s, uh, you enjoyed films like Lethal Weapon, thrillers like Fatal Attraction. It's kind of like a cross between Fatal Attraction meets Lethal Weapon. It's a thriller set in New York about a female police detective. Um, and it's about a mysterious accident that happens at a traveling circus and she gets like dragged into it and, and everything goes screwed up. And yeah, it's a, a taut thriller. <laughs> I very much like that. I very much like that. And of course, obviously Max Cloud too. Yeah. Max Cloud too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I'm going to make you commit to that by the time we get off this call. <laughs> hey, look, I, I want it. I, I want it. It should happen. Absolutely should happen. Absolutely. Get get Tommy back. Get everyone back. Get the band back together. <laughs> so, guys, I'm not going to take up uh, much more of your time, but what I do want to ask you to do now is a little less cringier than what I've just asked you to do and let people know where they can find you, where they can find Max Cloud, where they can find other works of yours and just take a minute to sort of let people know about your projects. Do you want me to go first, Al? Yeah. Yeah. I like watching you do it first. <laughs> I've, not, just, I've noticed this. <laughs> just copy what I do and change yeah, exactly. the name. <laughs> <laughs> um so Max Cloud, you can rent or buy Max Cloud on Amazon Prime. Uh where else? Our oh, Apple <laughs> TV. Amazon Prime, Apple TV, and Google Play. Isn't it iTunes as well? iTunes. Isn't iTunes Apple TV? Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Sort of. Um, so, if you haven't watched it already, go do that. Um, w- twist. Um, Kevin wasn't a fan. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, some, but some of you might be. Um, that oh. is currently available to view on Sky Movies or Now TV. <laughs> Why am I talking like a news reporter? <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're about to do the weather. <laughs> this is why I shouldn't do things like this. <laughs> um, what it's else? Phone voice. Oh, yeah, it is my phone voice. Um, what else, Elliot? There's got to be. And have we got anything else to talk about? I've got a short film, but you don't care about that. I made a short comedy film. <laughs> That that's um I'm putting around the festivals at the minute, but I might put it online at some point. So, but you could just look on our IMDb's and then yeah, you... yeah check out check out IMDb. There's um yeah if anyone if anyone's interested in uh, at the moment I'm looking there's a film I did called We the Kings which it got really well reviewed. It won like best film at Rain Dance and then just didn't get a release, didn't get a UK release. And at the moment we're like. We're looking at our options to see, you know, where we could release it. Um, and it's a thriller. It's a, it's a, I mean, personally, from my point of view, it's a great film. Um, <laughs> Timothy West is in it and Amanda Abington and myself. Um, but it's a great little low budget kitchen sink British thriller. Um, so at the moment, I'm kind of working with the director now, trying to find a way to get that out to audiences. Um, so hopefully you'll see that at some point soon. Uh, Nerdly Out Loud is the perfect person or the perfect place to be sending your movies and then we will get it picked up for you. I mean, I'm saying that just because I want a copy, but okay. Uh, <laughs> that would be such a good service. Wouldn't, uh, yeah. wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? We, 
above and beyond for podcast <laughs> but anyway <laughs> anyway guys thank you so much for coming on this has been absolutely brilliant i've really enjoyed speaking to you this is a uh, genuinely i've said it enough times now but this is a movie that completely took me by surprise in a in a year that i needed movies to take me by surprise really just because i didn't need uh i didn't need dunkirk i didn't need tenet I didn't need anything like that last year. You're not I, like Christopher Nolan by any chance. <laughs> I love I love Christopher Nolan, but 2020, 2020 I did not need a Christopher Nolan movie. I needed a, a Martin Owen Max Cloud. That's what I needed. So guys, uh, thank you for coming on. This has been brilliant. Anybody watching, listening, uh, please do check out the social medias, check out their INDB, all the projects these guys have had on the go, and I'll just let these two uh, say goodbye, and then we'll uh, we'll we'll end it there. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Having us. It's, it's been, been fun. Awesome. <laughs> Cheers, man. Thanks again to Elliot Langridge and Sally Collette for coming on the show. I begged Sally. I'm, I'm not ashamed to say it. I'm not ashamed to say it, but I did kind of beg Sally to come on and do this. I was emailing her as the Twitter stalker guy. Um, you know, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. When a movie comes out that you thoroughly enjoyed and that you really liked and entertained the shit out of you, you do what you can to 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 speak to the people who had something to do with it or create it. And having Elliot on the podcast is fantastic because he is basically the second lead of this movie. Uh, some people might think Tommy Flanagan is. No, no, I'm sorry. It's it's definitely Elliot. And when he has that little fisty cuffs with John Hanna. Yeah, I believed you could beat him up. <laughs> but yeah, and Sally, what an absolute gem. She is so cool. Um, they do have a Sky One original that is out there right now called Twist. It's sort of like a modern day reimagining, remake, re revisioning of the Oliver Twist story in modern day London with a bit of parkour and everything. They did give me a little bit of a ribbing throughout the, the, the interview because they realized that I hadn't watched the whole thing. I had only started it. I don't have any excuses for that. You should never start something and then not finish it. If you start a movie, you should always finish it. That is my motto, and I messed up on that one. I have subsequently watched the movie, though, and I did enjoy it. So there you go, Sally, and there you go, Elliot. I enjoyed it very much, so... So please do get, uh, go and give that a watch as well. Give that a chance. You, you guys will love that. Um, please do check out the Intergalactic Adventures of Matt Cloud. It is everywhere. You'll be able to find it if you just look for it. You know, Google it, find it, go and watch it. You will absolutely love it. For me, it was easily in my top 10 of 2020. Oh, yeah, once again, thank you, Elliot. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. No, Christ, no. So this video is a little bit late going out because I've been working on a little project. Um, I decided to take on a little bit of a task and um, do one of these like um what you know when you rank somebody's career and you take an actor director or whatever and you rank their career and we decided to start with someone who has 39 movies to their name which doesn't sound too hard it doesn't sound too bad it turns out it's not that easy though so there will be a video coming out very soon i will give you a hint he has a movie coming out on amazon prime very very soon it's a sequel to a pretty famous movie that's probably given it away i don't care if you think you've got it put it in the comments so yeah that's coming soon i've been working on that lot this week and turns out making these videos is actually a lot harder than it looks so yeah please do as i say everything like subscribe rate review comment all that good stuff let's have a conversation put it in the chat we will do all that good stuff and I will answer you back as much as I possibly can. I'll be back shortly with another video. I cannot wait to bring some of these interviews that we've got coming down the line because there is some great stuff coming, believe me. There's some fantastic independent movies being released right now. Please do check all of them out. And I am going to go because I'm just babbling now. I'm just babbling. Keep an eye out for the new video though. The new video is going to be coming very soon. I'm super excited to see how it turns out because I'm not sure how it's going to be. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you on the next interview. But for now, go and watch Max Cloud because it's bloody awesome.